saying the coding has started. Yeah. Or your or your thumbs up. I'll have some tea in the meantime. I swear this is tea. Okay, recording has started. Hi everyone. Um so today there's a not too much content. I have a couple of things I want to show you on cover the usuals. Um, Johan and Daniel are not around, and today's going to be a great uh, time to uh, uh, for you to ask your questions or maybe discuss whatever you want to discuss. Um, before uh, before we go there, so the DSC website had some issue with the pipeline. So basically, the Azure DevOps tasks uh, that usually build the website is broken so i've already committed a fix uh to the to the task uh, let's go to this one uh, can you mute yourself Raymond? because your typing is too loud thank you and so uh yeah so the pipeline is broken hopefully it's going to be fixed uh, it is going to be fixed soon when they approve my pull request for fixing the uh, azure devops task but uh, in the meantime you can see the source code has been prepared by uh, Johan here. So uh, the agenda, so again, oh yeah, I forgot I needed to talk about this one. Um, so there's a few things to cover, so I will go quickly on those first. So there's been changes in, in the Azure DevOps pipeline, so if there's any maintainers here, you will see that um, the Ubuntu 16 is not an, an image available anymore. So um, the Git version uh, Azure DevOps tasks we used to use uh, was compatible with 16.04. It's compatible, I believe, with 18.04, but it's not compatible with Ubuntu Dash Latest or uh, Ubuntu 20.04. I believe it's the same. So um, I will show you how we can fix it, and then we've updated the um, the template if you create a new a new module. But basically, there's a workaround to get um, either Ubuntu latest or the way you just you change your image to um, Ubuntu uh, 18.04, and that should work. And uh, this is the link, so I will I will show that to you as well, and it will be on the on the release notes when the website is fixed. Um, first, we will go through the DSC resources that have been released. Uh, the uh, X Exchange has been released, SharePoint DSE, always I think SharePoint DSE, I don't know if Yorick is around. Nope, uh, but uh, he's been releasing, I think, a few fixes, especially for reverse DSC, if I read the changelog correctly, which I may not. But a um, lot of, re of releases here. And then in the tooling, there's a few releases that went with the DSC resource stock generator, so some bug fixes, mainly bug fixes there, and then some uh, fixes in sampler GitHub tasks. So it's mainly about um, uh, enabling to use the GitHub task for something else than just a PowerShell module. As an example, uh, making it easier to release uh, guest configuration packages as artifacts in your uh, GitHub. And in your GitHub uh, repository, so then you can have releases and artifacts, but also uh, it could be chocolatey package if you build uh, chocolate, uh, chocolatey um, packages through the sampler pipeline. And I will try to demo that as well. Um, there's also, yeah, so there's also been some changes, well, just preview changes in sampler. Uh, those are just adding new features and especially um, uh, as I said, chocolatey packages, so being able to create a chocolatey package and then being able to build it or use the same versioning system as we use, the same release system as we use, and then um, manage to publish to the uh, gallery if you want or to your customer, well, not the gallery, the chocolatey community feed or your private feed. Um, that's the main changes that we have. So not too much activity on the DSC side, at least what's apparent. There's been a lot of activity on the Config Manager uh, CBDSC I have seen, uh, but I don't know if the maintainers are around. I can't see the list right now, but a uh, but lot of activity going there. I know actually Jan Andrik as well has been working on this, I believe, but he's not there either. Too bad. Um, so that is for the DSC resources. If you have any question about those, feel free to ask. Otherwise, we will get back to sampler and the chocolatey stuff soon. But um, 
otherwise if there's no questions you can put them on the chat and then if you can't speak put them on the chat and then someone will uh, let me know it's on the chat okay so i'll just go straight to the azure devops uh with the fix for ubuntu 16 so let's open this one so uh this is the pull request that i've been to fix because it was using uh actually 1804 so in this case we're not using the git version task at all anymore so we've worked around it and then we just use the dotnet tool to install git version tool the reason is Sometimes, let's say your organization may not allow to use this task, or it's it's hard for you if you don't own the organization in Azure DevOps to be able to install it. So instead, you don't need to install the tasks in um, in Azure DevOps. You can just install the Git version tool directly into uh, the image that you use. In this case, it's Ubuntu. So you just use .NET tool install, and then install Git version, and then we create. Um, the the versions uh, variables that the pipeline will use later. So there's slight difference because we use uh, there's a for each uh, doo -doo -doo, there's a for each here for all the properties of the git version object, and then we're just setting up the Visual Studio uh, so sorry the Azure DevOps uh, uh, variables here. So now we're using directly the name of the value, and that's why it's called new git version two. So you can use git version instead of git version dot new git version two, we just get directly the variable uh, new git version two. And that's pretty much all you need to do. Then you need to replace Ubuntu 18.04 or 16.04 to Ubuntu dash latest. Someone is unmuted. Maybe there's a question. Um, so that's the chance. So if you have issue building because of Ubuntu not having, uh, not being able to run, um, uh, not being able to run at all, usually your pipeline doesn't run at all, and then uh, it's because the image has been removed. So 18.04 should still work, but 16.04 definitely doesn't work anymore. So that's the fix, and the link is in uh, this link. So hopefully it will be on the website in the in the meeting notes. Uh, soon, uh, as soon as the, as soon as the pipeline is fixed. And okay, so that was for this part. Oh yes, that's a good point. Uh, Azure DevOps has deprecated the Build Worker Windows Server 2016. So if you have this, uh, be careful. I think no, uh, yeah, the only thing available is 2019 and 2022. Uh, and tw uh, Windows latest, uh, I think, is using windows uh, 2022 so that's something to bear in mind if your pipelines and if your tests are running on 2016 basically with the default um the uh, hosted agent you won't be able to test on 2016 anymore which is a bit sad so maybe for some people it would be good to find other ways to test it. is there anything else that any question or anything else you want to mention around those anyone Take the opportunity to check who's on the call. Oh, Mike is there. Hello, Mike. Michael, sorry. If there's another Mike. You're, you're muted, though. Oh, I forgot this announcement, Michael. Maybe you want to give everyone uh, the update on uh, what you're doing now? <laughs> sure. I didn't see the chat window. Oh, uh, yeah, so. Uh, over the last month, I have transitioned roles from uh, being the PM for guest config and DSC to being manager of the PowerShell team. So now you can blame me for everything. <laughs> we were already. <laughs> At least I was. <laughs> but that so PowerShell, Cloud Shell, uh, 132 SSH, and then of course DSC and guest configuration as well um, are, are all things that we're working on across the team. So. Okay, so you're doing everything. So what you were doing before, plus the PowerShell side of it. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. So then that means maybe we, there, there will be um, a bit more continuity on, uh, on on like all this front. Like it would be easier yeah. to get information. So we can ask you, and then you will be answered. You will be able to answer any question. I hope so. Perfect. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> 
Okay, um, a reminder for those who were not there last time. So six weeks ago, we uh, was it six weeks ago? I can't remember. Um, I think the last one, uh, let me check my calendar. Yes, yes. So, so six weeks ago, we had Andrew who was from the PowerShell team and we did a lot of work on the DSC side in the PowerShell code and he explained a lot about the changes that were happening. So if you have questions uh, on, you know, what's actually been changed and there's still more to get changed, but what has changed uh, in 7.2, PowerShell 7.2, then I really recommend look, um, having a look at the last session recording, which is on YouTube, which is also, um, which will also be released on the, uh, on, these, um, on the website as soon as the pipeline is fixed. And, and one thing I didn't realize, but just started recognizing is that the PowerShell community call tends to be the same week as the DSC community call. Um, for tomorrow. this occurrence, it's tomorrow. I don't know if it always works out that way or not, but. It, I've seen it a few times and I was wondering yeah. earlier if, if it was no, if we were in sync now, because. That would be I great. Think, Just... I think it could be because I think yes, uh, last uh, last time it was as well, so. Uh... Maybe yeah, I would. Have, so. I would love to just have you know sort of like community week that occurs on a regular basis. Yeah. Will work for you, but yeah, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, I wanted to show you. All right, and um, do do do. So there's a few things I wanted to show you. Yeah, let me just bring some things. So uh, no, first of all. Oh yeah, and there's the M365 community call as well. Whoa, that might be actually yeah, that's a good point. Uh, we should probably like if there's if there's um, if there's community calls on the links to you know the information page for those community calls, uh, maybe you can put them in the chat so then you can have a look at that. And we will probably try like of those when they're related. So we should probably put them on the website as well, because if you're here, maybe you're interested as well. And you know, I, I didn't know about the M365 community call. So that would be interesting as well to have. Okay. Um, do you have any questions? Any question for Michael? Any question for anyone? Any question for the community in general? Feel free to unmute and then all just type it in the chat and then we'll try to have a look at this. I think someone's trying to speak, but I can't hear anything. Nope. All right, I just, okay, never mind. Well, uh, we can't hear anything. So if someone is trying to speak, feel free, and we can't hear you, just make sure you write on the chat if you can. Okay, I wanted to show you a few things. Uh, the first thing is, so you've been using Sampler if you've been using the DSC, um, the DSC community, the DSC resources that are managed by the community. And basically, in the next release, because at the moment it's only in a pre-release, we've added some feature. And let me find this code. Basically, it's just a feature so that you can add, you can add a chocolatey package to your system. So um, instead of building modules, now you can also build chocolatey packages. And if you're not familiar with chocolatey packages, basically it's, um, it's a NuGet package that contains or that can link to the software that you want to install. And then it, uh, it helps you with uh, some, um, some functions to be run before you modify a package, before you install or before you uninstall it. Uh, there's a lot of content on the Chocolatey website. So if you go to chocolatey.org, you will find much more information on this. But if you're familiar, just know that you can easily create your packages now based on the same principle as Sampler. So you just go in, um, if you install the latest version, so if you do install, sorry, install module Sampler, and in this case, it would be, ah, sorry, uh, allo pre-release. If you've done that, that gets you the list, uh, the latest sampler, and then you can do a new. Oh, sorry, I'll do. I'll just create another one. Yeah, actually, you sampler pipeline, and then you say, hey, where do you want the sampler pipeline? In this case, I want to create a chocolatey pipeline. So that will just create the base pipeline. So I will create a new one just so you see my choco pipeline. 
And then you have some other information that you need, description of the project and all of this. Okay, some description. Uh, where do you want to put your module? If you want to have a, a license, and if, if you are license in this case, I want MIT. Um, where do you want your sources? Which feature do you want? And then you create that, and that creates your a pipeline and some information. So then you can open, uh, sorry, my Choco pipeline. Oh, sorry, I was I was probably in the wrong. Was it in the wrong folder? Oh, why is it so big? Hold on, it's going over to screen. There we go. So basically, it creates your pipelines there, and you have information. But at the moment, you have nothing in the source. So what do you do? Add sample, the type of the sample, and then in this case, it would be a chocolate package. So then you say, hey, what's your folder source? Uh, the name of your package. So just say, my package, and then uh, description, summary, URL, and then something like this. I just do something a bit random. And then yes, 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 there's a lot of questions, best to five. And then it adds just what you need to create a package. So that's your package. I won't run this one because then, as usual, it needs to uh, resolve the uh, dependencies. So I've prepared that one here. And then when you do this, similar to what you do before, you just run a build, the same as for your modules. This module, this um, the build YAML has been changed when you create a chocolatey pipeline. So instead of building a module, it will build chocolatey packages. And you can have several packages within your source in the same way. Within that, you have choco package one, you can have another one here. But basically, it will just build your packages. And then in your output, you should see your choco package. And it's been, um, it's been packaged here. So let me just make that one a little bigger. You can see it also used the version that you use in Git version in the same way that we do the module. And then uh, this is the unzip file if you want the, the stage directory for the unzip file. So you see what's been in there. And then you can uh, use the same thing when you're releasing GitHub and add this to your artifacts. So um, that is uh, one change. It's not perfect yet. Uh, that's why it's still a pre release. There's a, a bit, a few um, uh, rough edges that we need to improve, but otherwise you can uh, do that. And I wanted to show something else. Oh yeah, the DSC pipeline. So if you have any question for this, feel free to ask. It's not directly related to DSC, but it's, if you do some DSC, it's quite convenient to have this when you also use a uh, chocolate for building your packages, especially most of you probably already know um, chocolate as a tool. Um, let me grab now. So there's another project. So if you are not familiar with the DSC workshop, let me remind you. So the DSC workshop, maybe, maybe Raymond here can explain us what the DSC workshop is because look, it's you here. So then you can explain that, and then I will uh, I will show the differences and and uh, what DSC pipeline is about. Oh. Okay, <laughs> so Just the DSC workshop is actually the, the adoption of um, the white paper called the Release Pipeline Model, um, released by Michael Green and Steve Murawski, and is implementing all the DevOps principles and features, uh, or principles and patterns um, that we know about, and was derived from a project that Gail started five or six years ago, right? Yeah, the well, DSC info sample. So it started with uh, Steve as well. Steve Moraski, I just continued what Steve, Steve was doing. Okay, so it has a long history. <laughs> yeah. So the, the DSC workshop project is actually a blueprint that you should use if you want to start your new DSC project because it has kind of uh, solved all the problems that we usually have if we use DSC without all these principles and patterns as a technology by its own. So yeah, we are using what the community learned over the couple of years, and um, the especially the, the big features is having a build pipeline that is a single entry point and is creating all the artifacts that we need to run DSC in a push or pull mode, cloud or on-prem, doesn't matter, both works. 
um, we have a very solid and flexible and scalable config management utility, which is uh, Gale's Datum implementation, which is also or which has learned from um, Puppet roles and profiles, and it the build pipeline works on Azure DevOps, on Adware, on GitLab, on all these automation systems that are currently on the market, and uh, we are currently in the process of moving that to a new build model, and I think this is what Gate is going to show you. Yes, so basically this project started oh, along. One thing, if you have no clue how the DSC workshop works and you think it's interesting, have a look please at the exercises. Um, they should be ready in about a week um, because the exercises give you a very good introduction in first the DSC basics, then the DSC config model and how the build pipeline works, and then we are extending this um, to Azure DevOps, how the build pipeline can work in the cloud and how you can upload all your artifacts to Azure Automation. So I think the exercises are the best entry point if you want to understand how stuff works. Sorry, Gay, now it's yours. No, no, that's true. That was the important point. So uh, basically that, uh, so, so that workshop uh, it originated a long time ago and then it was using um, the, the work I did, which was also led to sampler later on. So basically that's an old type of pipeline, which is similar to, um, I would say similar to sampler, but it's not sampler. So since then sampler has evolved a lot. So I started working on uh, updating it to, um, to actually use sampler. So then it would be a bit simpler and, and uh, more having more features now. So basically that's what I wanted to show you is uh, it's very similar to sampler, but it's really customized for uh, for building the DSC workshop, or at least in principle. And then Raymond is in the process now to take this work, which is um, just uh, the basics, if you want, of the DSC workshop, but applied using sampler. And then it will re, uh, re well, outside, update the, the DSC workshop to use this pattern, the sampler uh, project. So basically, um, it has different tasks, different different tasks, very different from uh, what you build when you build a module, a partial module. So there's no automation to create this. Uh, at the moment, the pattern would be just to use this repository. So uh, that's my company and then uh, DSC pipeline. And then from there, you will have all the data you want. Um, you just copy that and then you have the same uh, source with the same nodes and environment that you have uh, in the DSC workshop. So what does it look like? Let's open that. Uh, yeah, that's the one I think I just pulled. So let's just do git branch. And I think I just run it as well. So let's just do code. Apple news code. Very quick. So basically what it is, so um, we in in the in this principle it uses datum which is uh, what um, Raymond mentioned is the module I created a while ago which if you're familiar with Puppet is what uh, Hira is so Puppet Hira was a way to represent data and configuration data into um, into YAML files and and then using those in a YAR key type of uh, model to provide information to the resources or the equivalent of resources the Puppet modules so in this case we do something similar but for DSC. We have uh, the nodes definition uh, written in YAML with some very specific information just for the nodes. And then basically we have, sorry, and basically we have different roles and the roles will say, for instance, um, what a domain controller should be configured or, or how the file server or the uh, web server should be. And then on top of that, there's some baselines. So if we look at a file server, we say, hey, that's all of the things we want to be configured on a file server. Those are the file and folders and registry values. And then there's also some other information, security baseline, and things like this. If we look at domain controller, there's ADDS controller. So those actually are composite resources. So this is used by composite resources. So what happens is when you create a node, you say, hey, this, this node should be of this role. So basically it will inherit all the information for the role file server here. And then it will merge the information from there. Uh, so on the node level, if that's the node level. And here, open on the side. Where is open on the side? Every time I present, I don't know where it is. Here we go. And then it will merge this data plus this data. So, 
sometimes when you start, it's hard to understand how the data is merged and what the re result of this merge. So what we create is we create RSOP, which is the resultant set of policies. So if we look in the output, I didn't build. I didn't build. I thought I built. Oh yeah, I know I didn't. So let's just do that again. So similar to sampler, because it's based on sampler now, we are on the tasks and let's just say, hey, I want to build. So what's happening here, it's gonna uh, clean up a few things. Let me just expand that so you see, it doesn't go too fast. And then it starts running different tasks and some tasks is loading the data, then validating the configuration data. You can add all the rules you have, you know, naming conventions or things like this for your data. And um, let's say all, uh, you know, um, all nodes should have a name that starts with GSE, as an example. You can have your ro your rules and then put them into best the tests to make sure they are validated before someone creates a pull request or something. And then you can have some of the uh, tests. Those are the tests we're running. And then we can compile the RSOP. So compiling the RSOP is just say, hey, we have different layers of information based on the organization, and we just put them together to have all the configuration data for one node um, so that we can build them off. So when we do this in the output, you will see the RSOP. So for file 01, we see all the data that applies to file 01. So if you want to compare let's say one node with another, you can just say select for compare, and then you compare the other uh, file server. So they should be almost the same because they're based on the same role. So I want to compare with selected, there we go. Let me just hide this. So then you can see everything that is different between the two nodes. That's the configuration data. So from this configuration data, uh, what we ask now is we will compile the module. So that's, uh, part of this, so that's compiler root configuration, and then it goes through everything, every nodes, and then it will do the compilation. So the compilation is done here, and then when it's finished, you will see the MOF uh, being done, actually just finished that one, and then you will go to the next MOF. Come on. Yeah. Teams plus uh, DSC compilation takes a lot of resource. But I think, yeah, this one is done. You should go to the next one. I think that's what it's doing. So uh, you can see that uh, that's my time here. So that's just been compiled. And then uh, you have them off with everything that was uh, in the YAML file and has been applied and done there. So uh, let me uh, close this one. Okay, so then you see it went for the second MOF, and then we should see the second MOF soon. Um, I might need to do refresh or I'll let him finish. There we go. You've got the second one that's been created. So that's the way, and then it will go through everything, and then you will have the notes. So I just wanted to show you that because it's always it's also based on sampler. So this one is simpler in at least for you, it's probably much simpler than um, the DSC workshop. And uh, that's also why Raymond is uh, is migrating, I would say the DSC workshop to that pattern. Any question? Nope. Okay. Um that's I think. All the content I wanted to show you today, because if I show other things, it's probably not going to work. I ran out of luck, I think. Um, if you have any question or if you have any topic you would like to discuss, feel free to bring it. Nothing? Oh, th this is Mike O'Neill. I was just curious with uh... DSC 3.0 and PowerShell 7.2, everything going class based. Anybody working on migrating all the script based stuff to class base? Great question. Anyone? <laughs> what I can say is the problem is not that much of um, changing from class based to non class based. Um, the problem is updating the tests. So uh, the, the problem is when you have, uh, hold on, I need to be able to just kill this. 
I've seen enough. Well, I was just going to say we can have Michael uh, be blamed for this one too, right? <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> I think I think we, for this one, I, I can also take some part of the blame because I was discussing with uh, Steve for this. Steve. But but we are just to put it out there. Um, we're we're obviously not just ignoring the issue because uh, there's. Like last time I looked, there were closing in on fourteen hundred community resources in the gallery. So. Um, we uh, we are going to put some engineering time into. Finding out if it's a solvable problem to build a tool that would help. In theory, I mean, you your methods just need to call, get, set, and test target resource, and then your properties of your class become, you know, the former parameters. I would be surprised if it perfectly maps over like that in every single case. Um, but I think the idea is, could we create a tool that that helps with making the conversion. And then, you know, in cases where it's not possible to reach 100%, what's the achievable percentage that it can be converted over? But that's yet to be determined. And unfortunately, I don't have a timeline yet either, but it is something we're taking a close look at as a project. What yeah, experience? and this is James Sudbury. Um, sorry. Um, I just want to let you know that the, the, um, the project that I kind of Loaded, it's been a number of months ago now, um, kind of would be a possible framework for uh, creating that where uh, basically we could use sampler or uh, or something similar, you're talking about a tool, um, to lay out that base infrastructure that basically creates a generic kind of mod module or generic object that calls out to those set get and test uh, commands that we already have in the existing uh, existing modules, and it could be that. But again, I haven't uh, I haven't fleshed it out completely, uh, especially when it comes to the uh, the remove uh, kind of functionality uh, in my the, the project. Um, I know that we've linked the project a couple times before in the uh, in these community calls. But if somebody wants to take a look at that and help contribute to that, um, it, it might be a, a good solution there. So you're saying I, using- I think you've identified, go ahead. No, I think you, you say, uh, I believe James, you, you're saying a few things. You're saying um, um, a, a, a class-based, a class resource that actually calls directly the get, set and test target resource from an existing MOF-based resource. Is that what you're saying? Sort of. So basically, you would you would import those those commands from the existing modules uh, with all their code, and and then call that. Um, in theory, I guess you could load the the previous versions and have the module call out to those methods directly, even. Um, but that would, you know, that would obviously need some uh, validation testing there. Yes. But but basically, the class. Yeah. So yeah go ahead. Go ahead, Michael. Well, I was going to say, I, I think you are on to a very positive um, forward looking pattern, which is that for someone who is new to DSC, they always sort of went towards the script resource. And they did that because they felt like they weren't having to go construct uh, the, the, the wrapper, right, that, that makes the DSC resource. They almost felt like they were just able to take arbitrary code, drop it in place, and use it. And so, on the on the other side of the um, of the coin, I guess uh, we now have this concept that we like, everybody has to write class based resources. And when people hear the word class, they immediately think that means I have to know how to write C sharp. And so people who were new to DSC who were already feeling like maybe building a PowerShell script-based DSC resource was too much work, so they just used the script resource. Now it's kind of like their only option is to jump over to the class-based resource, and then they just don't do it. What's uh, ironic is that from my experience so far in trying this out a couple of times, the, the uh, examples that are out there where that use the script resource are incredibly easy to map over to class-based resources because 
you already have everything encapsulated right there as script input for each method. So it doesn't typically take that much change um, to, to bring it over. So I'm not sure exactly how this is all going to end up. I think uh, like the, the pattern that your um, tool, the, the, thing, the thing that I really liked about that tool and, and the pattern that it was sort of working off of is, can we, like maybe we shouldn't even call it a class-based resource. Maybe we need a more neutral name um, and that, you know, the community um, should have a big, a big stake in that um, and then have some sort of model where like through some sort of tooling, people who are new to DSC can just say, here's the code snippet. And I have a very simple scenario. And this is what I wanna use for test. This is what I wanna use for get. This is what I wanna use for set. Can you produce the module and the manifest? And in the end, it's a class-based resource or just a DSC resource maybe. Um, but it would, take a, it would take away the fear of, am I making any mistakes in a, a, like assembling all of the pieces in the right way. Um, I think that that would be great for anybody who is just getting into DSC if they can just start with simple scripts. Yeah, because that's the the only thing we need is basically those those three methods, and then returning this class is the one that we defined there. Basically, we just need uh, the basics, which is just the class definition with the properties, some example at least for the uh, DSC property, so the key, and then um, in this case, you know, the, just the right normal one. And, and, then, and then having just the get set test and do something very simple with it. But I agree with you that it's actually, when you understand, I think the problem people may have when they're new to writing DSC or new to writing some PowerShell classes is the concept of class instance object, basically. And that's why we need, yeah, we need a way to remove that fear. But yeah. Yeah, so, the, so to the question, to transform them, to change them, um, it's, Technically, it's not that difficult because uh, it, the get method is just doing the same thing as the, um, or it should be doing the same thing as the get target resource was doing before, and the set the same thing as the set target resource was doing before, and so on. Um, you see the test returns the boolean similar way, the set just setting it, and then the get is should be returning, you know, all the properties that we have uh, defined. So all of those properties, basically. In the, for this class, uh, in this example, so changing the existing ones, uh, there's a few things to say. So the first one is, um, it's only a problem with PowerShell 3.0, and there's still PowerShell, uh, sorry, uh, DS uh, PS Desired State Configuration 3.0 dash beta one, uh, but in uh, P PowerShell, uh, what is it, uh, 7.1.3. Um, the old way still works. The MOF base still works. Is that correct, Michael? Just uh, it's a bit late for me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it still works. So the uh, and then for guest conf, yeah, seven hundred one. So e for guest config, yeah. if you if you use guest config on Windows, uh, tell me again if I'm wrong. But uh, the one that works with seven dot one uh, would still work because uh, guest config at the moment is still using seven dot one for Windows. Is that correct? Right. Still correct. Yeah. So on uh, it's on Linux that uh, when you use uh, for uh, when you use DSC resources on Linux on seven dot two, and then you have to have uh, classes, class based resource. The MOF based resource wouldn't work. So, yep, the other big change, um, not big change, but just thing to understand uh, that this community will understand. Uh, with 7.1, the PS Desired State Configuration module ships with PowerShell. Starting in 7.2, it's a separate install from the gallery. Starting with 7.2, you'll want to install the pre release for PS Desired State Configuration, which is version 3. And if you go into the PowerShell gallery and look at PS Desired State Configuration, specifically 3.0.0, which is a pre-release, um, you'll find that it's end-to-end -end PowerShell and the configuration keyword is there, get-dsc resource is there, get-dsc checksum is there. Um, so a, a lot of work is going into having DSC be able to move on its own and be entirely in PowerShell if possible. 
as much as possible in PowerShell. Say it that way. I, I, in the chat, I tapped a, a very quick summary of what you said. Okay, yeah. Um, any more questions? I know for you that answers the question. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I just got a quick question. Has there something that's been changed with the pipeline recently where you're requiring every branch to be called main? I noticed on the config man CBDSC, we still have it as master, and also on a SQL resource that's still called master, we both failed at the exact same spot. Okay, show when me the link. To publish. Show me the, oh, to publish. So, oh, okay, no, there's, there's uh, is the website working? There should be, uh, okay, let me just, so there's, so, the quick answer is no, we don't require. The The new default on the templates is based on main. So there might be, so if it's not set up properly, I would say in the, um, in uh, the uh, Azure pipeline at YAML, like there's some variables that you need to tell, okay, the main branch is main or the main branch is uh, master. So in those cases, uh, there's no, there's not, there hasn't been changed, but uh, it should be, you should be able to specify if you're running on master, if you're running on main, if the main branch is master or if the main branch is main. So let me just take a, a, an example here. Um, uh, let me try, let me think. Uh, uh, In this case, Send me the link if you have a failed pipeline and then I can definitely have a look. It is the kind of questions as soon as you have an issue like this, but uh, drop it into the Slack channel um, in, in the DSC channel on the PS Slack or, or Discord, and then I can more quickly jump on it. Sorry, not this one. The Azure Pipeline YAML. And then in there you have branch. And then the source branch, and then you have you have those basically. Those are the key element where you say the Redis branch is main or the main Git branch is main, and then if it's not, it's master. The reason we need this is because we are um, uh, so so sampler automatically looks at the change log and make sure that the re the change log is released properly, and then when you create a release. In, in GitHub, it also tells you what has changed based on what you've updated in the change log. But basically, that's the two um, the two things that you need to make sure uh, are set for the publish task to make sure it knows how to do the diff. I think main at the moment main should be the default. But um, if main is not the default for for your for your repository because you haven't changed it yet, just go to master. And then if you want to uh, to change from master to main in the DSC community, there's a blog post to explain. I think there's a blog post somewhere to explain you how to do it. Um, there is. I, I was looking at that earlier. There we go. So steps to rename master to branch and DSC community resource. And then again, if any issues, like some of us have done it in a, in a few uh, in a few repositories, so feel free to just drop the link and ask for questions, and then and then you can help as well making the transition. Hopefully that Thank answers you. the question. And then yeah, uh, another one, another. I'll put that in the chat so then you know what to look for. That's the two, and that's on the publish task. That's probably what you're missing. If it's if it's working locally and then there's an issue on the on the pipeline, that's probably problem. And you have it there as well. Any other question? All right, that's all I had for today. If you have some ideas or requests, maybe for next time, or if you want to present something, Raymond, I'm looking at you, um, then feel free to let us know, and then uh, don't laugh, Constantine, you're next. Uh, yeah, just just let us know, and then uh, always we in the ch uh, ch uh, Slack channel, sorry, and feel free to ask questions there. We also answer to issues. If you have some issues, you can post them on the DSC community, but the best, way to find us is, is on the DSC channel. And if you have questions for Michael, he's always around as well.
Anything else? No. As always, we uh, try to record every session and we put them on the um, we put them on the uh, DSC YouTube channel, and then we put them as well on the website. I will show you in the DSC community calls when we can. So uh, the release is broken, as I said. But if we look at maybe a recent one, usually we put them here so you can see them on the different uh, community calls. And then you have the agenda usually that comes below it, if any. So there's a few uh, there's a few that are uh, interesting maybe to you. So feel free to browse them if you missed uh, previous ones, because we talk a lot about the new change in DSC. That was the last call, uh, this call, I think. Uh, oh, no, that one. Maybe I can't remember. That was the one before. Uh, I know it's the one we can't. We haven't been able to update, so the link will be the link will be here. Uh, it will be it will be in this one. I'll open that for you. Uh, let me just check two years ago, five hours ago, and it's going to be this one, I think. There we go. YouTube. And that's the that's the that's the thing to watch. Uh, hopefully, that will be released as soon as the pipeline is fixed, so you will be able to find from here um, the recording with Andrew explaining the changes with PowerShell Seven. Thank you, everyone, and Raymond, you can stop the recording. Will do. Please, and you will have to give it to us as well, so we can upload the video.